challenged me was, I don't know if you remember when we first met, when we first had this conversation that my ex wife, I guess she had cheated on me and got pregnant by her first baby daddy. I don't remember that yeah, story. That was, that was where we kind of left off and we were talking about that whole thing too. So I allowed myself to open up to her again and reconnect and it happened again. You, uh, the exact same thing? The exact same thing, bro. Uh, I'm but, sorry, dude. So, but the difference with this one is she, she waited. She made me think the whole pregnancy was mine. That's the thing. Until, and you know what's weird? When the baby got here, she didn't talk to me for a week. It was weird. I wasn't at the hospital. I, was, I didn't sign any paperwork. Mm. She didn't talk to me for the whole week he was born. The week after she had spoken to me and she told me, yeah, it's yours. But she sent me pictures. Anyway, she made me think it was mine. So I was seeing him, but it was weird. It was the whole fucking situation was just weird, bro. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, I can imagine. I can only imagine how weird, like, it must have been. Because I would ask, like, hey, can I take him for the night? And she was, like, being weird about it. So I kind of, like, suspected. I'm like, something's fucking going on. Yeah. But we had a fallout in September. The baby's four months already. We had a bad fallout. So she she straight up mess just told me, hey, the baby's not yours. I got a DNA test, and it's Tony's while the other guy. Oh, my gosh. I just ran to, I just, I, I just, like, I basically fed, fueled the fire, you know? Yeah, yeah, I get what I, you're saying. I was still depressed, and I was questioning myself who I was from our previous incident. That was about, yeah. like, years ago, so that's, so everything just kept fucking adding up, feeling and I was in a fucking mess, bro. And I'm so grateful for everything that happened, you know? And people ask me, like, what, like, what would you do differently? Nothing. Because I mm -hmm. I wouldn't be who I am, who I am today, if nothing of that happened. Exactly. Know? That's how I feel, too. I feel like uh, every time someone is like, well, do you regret anything that happened? And I'm like, no, I don't. Because it's what kind of molded me into, into who I'm sort of becoming right now. You know what I mean? And it's not easy, man. That's really not easy um, to go through all that, especially um, with everything that you had to deal with, especially twice in a row. Um, so like, would you say that, like what happened? So did you, um, after that incident, did you sort of just like do the same thing that you did when you were in the hospital alone? Like, did you kind of take time by yourself to like regain that like solitude or did you like reach out and, and like, talk to people like what sort of helped you get just through everything like in general myself, <laughs> myself. <laughs> and I, I said this on my podcast I did with somebody uh mm -hmm. my boy, we used to toast to life podcast I think you see yeah. yep. I, I said I it so I think it was two weeks after um I got out of the hospital I found everything that happened I actually tried to go to therapy I'm like you know what I'm gonna just try it out I'll see how it's gonna go mm -hmm. in Lakewood right here down the street but I got kicked out. <laughs> I got kicked out of therapy. Oh, okay. Okay. So I always think it's funny, bro. So I go and, you know, the doctor comes in and I was just, he was talking to me, asking me questions. But then the whole experience, I just felt weird. I'm like, this motherfucker doesn't know me. How's he going to help me? He doesn't okay. know yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. So he doesn't. So, uh, you know, I, I interrupted him and I, I still remember the conversation. I'm like, sir, with all due respect, you're a professional. But you're telling me the same things you're telling your clients before and after me. <laughs> you don't know me personally. If you exactly don't know what I feel and what I went through, how can you help me? You're just going off base. You're, profession, you're professional. You're yeah. Career. You're like your, your rubric for what you feel you need to say or whatever. Off what you read in a book. Exactly. So at that moment, he told me I could leave his office. And, you know, when I left his office, you know, I just thought I'm like, fuck. This is going to be hard, but I'm about to do it for myself. As many times as, and I read an interesting quote. Uh, it was yesterday, actually. It was on IG. When you become lazy and you let yourself down, not only you're disrespecting the people that count on you, but you're disrespecting yourself. And that really fucking played good. And I'm like, damn, that's true. You, if whenever you're lazy, whenever you get caught up in your emotions and you self-doubt yourself, you're only disrespecting yourself and your well-being. And I'm like, yeah. damn, that really clicked with me. You know, yeah. so I I got real with myself. It, it, like I went to war. I decided to go war, to war with myself. That's what it comes down to. I had to become brutal. No one else put me in this situation. Yeah, I could I could go back and blame 
her. I can blame the alcohol. I can blame people that had nothing to do with it and just make excuses. But I'm like, no, I did this to myself. I got myself in this fucking hole. Let's get the fuck up and get back up. Yeah. So I just took it day by day and man, we're here. You know? I know, man. You even had, um, was it, uh, is it, was it your first powerlifting thing? My second one. My first okay. one, okay. I, I, did, yeah, I did it, but I don't really count it because <laughs> I, was, I was all fucked up. I was still drinking and, but I was thinking like, damn, if I would have never drank, if I was, if I would stay this focused, where could I be? Where could I be now in powerlifting? But it is what it is. Exactly. Just in one year, my numbers jumped up. It was about 140 pounds total. Yeah. Well, that's just from another meet coming up this Sunday, actually three days away. That'll be my third meet. So I'm doing mm-hmm. that to go to nationals in July. So I got some pretty big plans. You know, I launched a podcast. I launched my brand finally. So it's I have a lot going on. I know, man. Um, talk about it. So like uh, what... I know you always wanted to start your own podcast. It kind of took you a little bit. Um, what really, uh, what what drove you to, you know, what is it? It's like the Oso oh Strength Podcast, right? Oso oh, so Strength Podcast, yeah. What, uh, what 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 made you land on that? How did you come about, like, you know, your whole way you wanted to do it, all that stuff? So uh, I'm pretty sure you guys see on IG that me and my partner, Ruben, my teammate, my training partner, Ruben, we would do videos together. It's called the Hustle Through Destruction Podcast. So we were off and on, you know, he was always pretty consistent. It was me, you know, I always like, we got to a point where like, I can't be preaching. I can't be talking motivational shit if I'm not okay with myself. Yeah. I'm just being a fucking hypocrite. You know, I'm like preaching things, but I'm fucking doing one thing. You know, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I totally, I totally fell off and I'm like, I can't be talking. I can't be giving more motivational speeches if I'm not doing it myself and I'm not okay with myself. So mm-hmm. that fell through because that wasn't fair to Ruben because he was putting in the effort and I was just rolling with it. But what really clicked with my podcast is when I did the Toast to Life podcast. Mm-hmm. When I did that, I just clicked. I'm like, this is what's um, this is what I'm meant to do. I love it. I love talking. I love reaching out, helping people. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I just said fuck it, you got to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. I just got to. Yeah. The reason why also strength podcast. Well. The meaning of the of the bear is stay humble, be fearless, be kind, but also fucking be be fearful, like have mm-hmm. yeah, you know, and whatever disturbs your peace and your energy, your environment, your habitat, you're gonna be ready to attack. And I feel that's what the bear is. So you know, the also strength podcast, the clothing brand is. The, it's more than just a brand and a podcast. You know, whenever you rep my brand or you rep whatever I, I represent, you're humble, you're fear, fearless, but you're going to protect your energy at all costs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I feel like you portray that every day, man. Honestly, you have been consistently for a long time. And uh, what's funny about that is I feel like, uh, like, like you've always done that. Like, it's almost like you've always had a podcast because you've always done these motivational sort of like things. And um, you've always done like these videos, you've always done this and that and this and that. And um, I feel like now that you've just kind of honed in on who you are and really like what you stand for, really like, okay, I went through this. I'm not going to go through this. This is who I am. This is what I'm going to do. Like, I think now it's all kind of coming full circle and you're really like, you're really like, you had to go through some shit, but you're becoming finally after it all, the person that you saw you were from the beginning. Oh, that yeah. you really wanted to be, you know what I mean? Because you've had this vision for quite a long time. <laughs> yeah, well, like about- since I met you, since I met you, you've had this vision of doing this, but you just didn't like know where to start. But like you said, even with this podcast, like you just took the step by step approach and just whatever happens, happens. But I'm gonna just keep moving forward. At the very least, I'm gonna keep moving forward. I'm not gonna back down. You know what I mean? And it's not going to be easy at first, of course not. Well, you know that you're on, like you're an entrepreneur yourself. You have your music, you have your podcast, your book. That actually, Bob, by the way, is pretty good. Oh yeah. shit! No way, you did not. Yeah. I bought it. So it's pretty good. I'm gonna give you guys the link for that. If you still have it, I don't know if you still have more copies of it. I do, I do actually. But I appreciate that, man. Yeah, thank you. But uh, what was I gonna say? So yeah, it's not going to be easy. 
and I don't expect anybody to support me in the beginning. I don't expect a lot of supporters. I don't. And that's okay because I'm doing it for myself. If I can reach one person, that's what matters the most. And I know a lot of people nowadays, they want the clout. They want the likes. They want the support. Mm -hmm. And that's people, people do things for the wrong fucking reasons. And I just don't fucking get it. If you're to do things, you're going to have to do it because you love to do it. Mm -hmm. You're doing it for the clout, for the likes, for the approval. And you know what? And I'm guilty of that because when I was growing up, all up until I was 28, I was looking approval of people. I wanted to be accepted. So I did some stupid ass shit, bro. Even in high school, you know, I would do drugs. I would do, I would fight just to be accepted. You know, I was a pretty, you know, and I love my mother, but I put her through hell as a teenager and a younger adult because this is stupid ass shit just to be accepted. And I'm at a point now where I could say I'm fucking truly fucking happy with my own being and who I am. And if you don't fucking like me, <laughs> get two fucks. I'm really happy with myself. I'm proud of who I am. I'm just fucking happy, you know? Yeah, that's, that's amazing. No, it's, that's a, it's, it's amazing, dude, because that, that right there, that right there, that, that for people is so hard to just do in general because so many people, like you said, like they, they want the clout or they do things for the wrong reasons. And it's like they're doing it because they want some sort of result. You know, but like realistically, when you do something that you love, it's not about the result. It's about like the, the progression in it. And it's about you just loving what you do and just being better at it and enjoying it and enjoying everything about it. And then just encompassing that and being happy with who you are um, and, and with happy with where you are, where you've, where you've come so far and just ha and not sit there and judge yourself and judge other people and sit there and not strive for more you know what i mean and that that's what i love about you man is because you've always been like consistently inspirational like whether you were drinking or not and you were it was coming from a weird place you can tell now that it's coming from a more real place you know what i mean like, like you can tell now every time you speak or every time you do something there's like a certain aura to what you do that is just real and authentic and i think that that's like something that not a lot of people have man like when you say you're happy like that not a, everybody says like yeah i'm okay i'm okay nobody just sits there and it's like yeah they're like, like i'm fucking happy as shit like it's like nobody says that you know what i mean and, and 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 i think that when we find who we are and we find what we love and we don't care about the outside perspective and we just do it that's what really invigorates us man like that really makes us like really happy and proud to be who we are because then it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. Like you said, like you can just be who you are and it's just, it is what it is. But as long as you're happy and proud about that then do it, as long as you're healthy and you're good, like then by all means be you. <laughs> and I think that's what's wrong with people not finding happiness. They don't want, they want to find peace quickly. And that's the fucking issue. People, people get, people get disrupted. They feel uncomfortable and they want to find that peace immediately. They, they think just because they're fucking, they, they're going to fall, so they're going to get back up right away. And I think that's why people fall into bad habits, fall into bad relationships, because it's a temporary feeling. You know, it's a te people don't want, people don't want to see it. Like whatever you go through, whatever situation falls on you and what breaks you down is only temporarily. You got to find that strength within you and get back up. And also they want somebody to be there and help them up. They don't want to do it on, the, on, the, on their own because they're scared to fail. Yeah, you're gonna fail, but that's the whole fucking point of growth. That's that's how you find who you who you truly are. That's how you, you find your strength, your courage, your heart. And my message to those people that have are so you know, how's what's the word? So stuck in their feelings and so like stuck in a, a dark abyss they, they can't get out. You gotta you gotta get real with yourself. You gotta get raw with yourself. If you if you put yourself in a bad relationship, that's your fault. If you got yourself fat, that's your fault. If you're a fucking meth addict and alcoholic, that's your fault. And I'm saying that respectfully because <laughs> yeah, because you allowed yourself to get yourself into situations. And if you're not gonna, if you're gonna hate me for saying what I just said, you're gonna look yourself in the mirror for real. Because we can make all these excuses of why oh I don't have a dad oh I don't blah 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 all these sass. Everyone does. So the fuck what? Nobody else cares. You got to fucking put in that work. And, and I think me now, I know my worth and I know who I am. 
that I just want to help people and I want to I want to share this positivity, this raw positivity with someone else. I'm like, hey, if you can get real with yourself, you're untouchable, you're invincible, you're unbreakable, basically. And that's yes. my, that's my message. And, and, I, and I think that, I think you're absolutely right. And I think um, one thing that like you've always had is a growth mindset. And I think growth, like I have a, having a growth mindset as opposed to a fixed mindset is always so important because when you can see the opportunity and not the, like the disadvantage that's happening in front of you, how can you leverage your situation is my thing. Like, how can you leverage the bad into the good? How can you transmute any bad negative feelings into something that is going to help you? Because if it helps you, it's going to help somebody else. Uh, it's going at least because not, no, no two people think the same, but the perspective and like the emotions are all encompassed. So like everybody feels the same emotions, but the perspective is what's different. And so like when you share your perspective, they can resonate on a different level and see the opportunity, like how you do all the time. That's why I love watching your videos and stuff, man, honestly, because the way, like the way your perspective comes in is in such a raw and interpersonal, but like real form, because you can tell you've worked on it yourself. Like you can just see it, like you can see it, you know? And I think, um, I think that's something that you help provide others as well is like that level of growth mindset because it's really important for that. A lot of people just see the lack. They see the lack in their day. They see the lack in their life. They see the lack in every little situation that happens. They don't see all the green lights. They just notice the red lights. You know what I'm saying? And then they get mad. Like, and then that, that's really what it is. And it's like, if you've seen more green lights than red lights, if you see more good than bad, you're just leveraging your situations and practicing that every day. And I think that that's a really important thing because you've done a really good job at leveraging your situation into getting where you are now, you know, cause you're hitting new PRs, you're hitting, you know, different stuff. And it's just like, it, it's, it's cool to see because you're almost like a, you're almost like a, a, like a living, a test, like Testament to everything that we're saying too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that, that makes me feel like, Oh shit. Because I, I'm still the same Alex. I'm still the same also. Yeah. I just, protect who I am and protect my energy. That's who it is. And a lot of people want to go through life, like you said, with a bunch of green lights. They don't want to hit any red lights. They just want to go, 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 go with no obstacles. Me, I'm at a point where I embrace obstacles. Bring them on because I'm just mm -hmm. going to find a way to get around them, get through them. You need obstacles. You need different ways to build your growth. And people... It's fucking sad, but people, there's a lot of weak-minded people, and a lot of people don't want to accept that. I was weak-minded for fucking, since I was probably a teenager. Yeah, uh, and, and in those moments of hardship, like in those moments where you're expecting the green light and you get the red, how do you react? You know, how, how are you reacting in those moments? How, is it, are you getting mad? Are you getting impatient? Are you like, or, or are you being understanding? Are you... Are you like overcoming? Are you, you know what I mean? Like, like what are you doing in these moments of hardship to overcome the obstacle? And I think that's absolutely correct. You know what I mean? Because life is not, all, I, I was talking about that the other day, actually. I was like, life, I was like, everybody expects like the good. I was like, it's hard for people to see the good throughout, like as an overall picture. Like, you know what I mean? Like having that gratitude blanket, so to speak, for the obstacles and for everything in general. But like, at least embracing the hardship and knowing that that is what it's going to take for you to grow into the next level of who you want to be and attacking that and really being relentless about it. And just saying, you know what, I'm going to just embrace every fear and every, um, and every obstacle that I've ever been faced. I'm going to push through it regardless. You know what I mean? You have to. And I, I like to say this all the time, you know, if you have the strength to pick your, pick yourself up and keep your head up, keep your head up. But if you're going to keep your fucking head down and pout, keep yourself down, Keep your head down, but drive through fucking life like nobody else's fucking business. Give life hell. I mean, there's you. There's an option. You have an. I believe everybody has an option. And it, but it's, at the end of the day, it's your choice of what you want to do, of who you want to be. If you want to go through this life content, comfortable, average, or mediocre, that's on you. That's perfectly fine. If you don't want to feel the hardships, the discomfort whatever you know a lot of people are not built for this and you know and you can see it you can see it in people people don't like the confrontations they don't like the pain that's why people are alcoholics they turn to drugs they 
keep turning back to these bad relationships. They start sleeping around because they want to feel those endorphins for a temporary while. And that's why I was drinking so much because drinking, I became a whole different person. I was a, I was a, when I drank, you, you got all kinds of Alex. I was happy. I was happy five minutes. And the next five minutes, I was an angry person talking shit to everybody on IG, texting people, making people feel bad. And then I, another Alex would be like trying to find a, like I was straight up, I was trying to find a girl I could hook up with. And that was just because I was so drunk and wasn't thinking. And also because I knew what she had done to me. I'm like, well, if she did this, why can't I do that? Why can't I? Well, fuck, if you don't care, you have no respect for me, you don't care about who I am and what I gave to you. If you can sleep around with this guy, why should I care who I sleep with? So that's why I was always, I was also drinking because I wanted to build that confidence to talk to a female. I got you. But also because I love, I love being numb. I love being drunk, listening to music and just being lost. And I, you know, and I work, I work three days out of the week sometimes, and I work 16, 16, eight. Mm-hmm. And in those days, the only days I weren't, I wasn't drunk was my 16 hour shifts. But even after my 16 hour shifts, I would still go down the street to the gas station and buy three forties of those butt ice. And I fucking chug them real quick and get a little buzz before I go to bed. Yeah. So, well, you know, I work in San Diego, right? So yeah, yeah. at the end of my last shift, I would stop. It's called Pilot. I don't know if you've seen those gas stations, Pilot. Uh, nah. Oh, no. Well, yeah, I would just stop at a Pilot, get like 18 pack, 24 pack. And I would literally drink from San Diego all the way to I got here to LA. Oh, my God. And I did that for about f- four years. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And then when I when I got here to LA, I was pretty smashed, pretty hammered. Dang, so, so you were like drinking heavily for like years, years. This is actually, I think since I was 20. Yeah. But before that, a lot, I mean, a lot of people don't know, but I was doing, I was so, I was doing cocaine. I was doing weed, you know, I was pills, shrooms. I was, I was never in the right clear state of mind. I got you. I was never this clean, this happy, blessed, you know, I always had an excuse of to look for a substance to make me happy. Yeah. Instead of looking from within and finding yeah. from within yourself. And that's why I always stop doing the motivational videos, the motivational posts, because I'm like, well, fuck, I can't. And that's the problem with a lot of people now, like the influencers, Mm -hmm. they post a lot of fake shit. Like, hey, let's see who you are behind that post. Because I know a lot of motherfuckers that post shit, that's not really them. And a lot of these these influencers, these motivational people, they need the likes. They need the likes to feed their ego. Like for me, if you're not going to like my shit, at least I know you're watching. That's Mm -hmm. what it is. I don't need your like. I don't need your approval. But a lot of people, what is it? Rely on likes. Rely on the support. And on external things. Just yeah. external things in general just to make them feel good. And they don't want to look internal, you know? Yeah. And I think that that's something that, like, solitude does wonders for people. And I think people, people, like, it, it's weird where people's, like, focus is. Because even when they don't have, like, their phones or their social media or whatever the case is, it's really hard for them to like understand their own emotions. I feel like, and that's one thing that like, like if you can't understand your emotions and be familiar with them, at least as far as like how you're feeling, when you're feeling it, be aware of it. That can become a problem because then other people influence you more than you influence yourself based on your own emotions. Like other people's emotions affect you more than your own emotions. You can understand them and influence yourself to do the right thing. And it's really hard for people, especially with social media, because everybody puts on this fake persona that like you need the likes or you need this or you need that. And even if you don't, the people who are viewed a lot, it seems like they're liked and that you need to be that because they're liked a lot. But realistically, they're just being real, like certain people that are just being real with themselves. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like The Rock or freaking, you know, uh, LeBron or like Gary V. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like real genuine people who are actually working on themselves doing things. Yeah. And I think people also get misconstrued and they think, oh, like if I do something similar to them, then I'll get likes as well. But it's like they're just being themselves. Like you need to understand, like just be you and you'll, it, the likes don't matter. It's just something that happens event, like occasionally if that is the case. But just be happy with yourself and what you're doing. That's really where all of the happiness comes from. And T, uh, TD Jake said it best. A lot of people are focused on 
making a great copycat instead of making a phenomenal original. <laughs> that's so cute. That's lit. No, no, that's so sick, dude. That that's like probably one of the best things I've heard in a minute. Yeah, but a lot of people want to make a great copycat, but not a phenomenal original. But then it comes down to the people you hang around with. You know, I just want to make a quick shout out to my boy Alexis. He's on IG right now. I just, uh, hit, um, uh, hit me up on last week. I only worked out three days last week because my coach had me on a certain program, but he hit me up and he actually, hey, where the fuck are you at? Why aren't you at the gym? I'm like, hey, I'm resting. He's like, nah, get your ass in here, do some cardio or do some arms. I'm like, I'm trying to rest, you know? So I love my boys at the gym, my crew, because they hold me accountable. And if we're fucking up, we check each other hard. It's not just a little talk. We make sure you guys, you guys get the message. And, it's, and I truly believe it's, a, it's the people you're surrounding yourself with. If you're going to surround with people who are going to want to drink every day, you're not going to get anywhere. And I, you know, I said it, and I said it again in the last podcast. People have more friends that want to do shit on the weekend, like drink, go to breweries, bar hop. Like, for example, if you have a group of friends, right? Mm-hmm. How many times do you see? I see it a lot. If you tell your friends, hey, let's go, let's go to a happy hour. Let's go drink. Let's go. You know, or brewery. Let's go, you know, just to a bar, club. Yeah. Your friend, going to say, yeah, let's go get fucked up. Let's go enjoy it. Oh, hey, we have a motivational speaker in town. Oh, hey, they're doing a business seminar, a motivational seminar, how to start your own business. Let's go. Let's go check it out. Uh, I don't know. I, I might be busy that day. Yeah, busy doing fucking sitting on your ass. <laughs> And I see that a lot. A lot of people have fucked up circles. Yeah. And that, and it comes down to being comfortable. They don't want to remove themselves because they've known that circle for so long. Mm-hmm. And that's when it comes to sacrifices. You've got to sacrifice yourself to better yourself. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, you know what, what's interesting about that, too, is I think um, a, lot of, a lot of men in particular, they have certain circles that are pretty fucked up. And, and that's all they know, really, which is interesting. And so like, yeah, like I've seen certain circles where, you know, if, if, if you're like shunned because you don't drink or you're literally like, like you're like, they're like, oh, well, fuck you then. You don't want to drink. Well, then fuck. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I'm just, I just don't want to do like, what do you dude? Sorry. Like, oh, don't do you don't be a pussy. Like, this is, don't be a bitch. And I'm just like, what do you dude? No. Oh, <laughs> you're like, oh, you're a bitch for not drinking. And that's. It's just like, you mean for not poisoning my body? Like, okay, like Jesus, like, oh my God. And so I think, yeah, like, and, and you're right. Like, I think um, it, it's hard to, it, it, it's even hard to find communities of men that actually are um, accepting, you know, because, you know, you start to talk to certain people and right away you feel like, okay, um, am I just like weird for feeling like this or whatever? And I think, um, I think, uh, that's why certain circles just end up like that. And it's really like, like, it's so cool that you found a circle of guys that you can rely on and be real with. Cause I feel like most people are just not real with their feelings. Like most guys at least are not very real with their emotions. They're scared of somebody. And that's why I love my boys. Yeah. We're fucking, we don't care what we say. We're going to say it. And then, and if we end up fighting, like, my boy Alexis, he got mad at me that he threw me into a wall and made a fucking hole at the gym because we were, it just got that heated. You know, but I got mad love for that big guy. But, you know, it gets heated, but we love each other and we need that because that's how we get it. They're like, oh, fuck, we fucked up, we get it. And I'll move on. And a lot of people don't want to get real because they don't want to lose that friendship. They don't want to. If you got to worry about hurting your friend's feelings, you don't have real friends. You're not a true friend. You mm-hmm. got to hurt feelings. You got to make them realize and see the big picture. That's really true. And I think a lot of people too, they, um, in addition to that too, I think a lot of people tie certain identities in their past to those people. And so it's like, it's almost like killing like who they were as a person, because it's like, depending on how long they were friends, or let's say it was a relationship or something like that, you almost tie a certain identity to that person or like certain memories or certain things. So you kind of like get lost in that and you get pulled back and you don't ever move forward. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of weird and interesting that way, I feel like. Like, they stay in their high school stage. They yeah. never, like, the old people I used to do drugs with, hang out with, play basketball, smoke with, I see them now compared to where I'm at. They're still doing the same shit with the same jobs. I mean, yeah, I'm still a, I'm still a correction officer. By the way, I'm still in law enforcement. But I'm evolving into doing a podcast, powerlifting, and doing my own my own thing. And I see these people, they're still, they're still doing drugs. They're still 
being content with life. They're okay with who they are. And, you know, by all means, that's what they want to do. That's what they want to do. But that's not who I am. I know, I, was, I know God put a purpose and a gift in me, and I'm going to try to share it with the world, you know? And that's, and I think a lot of people don't want to see that. God put a gift and a talent inside of you, in each of us. Mm-hmm. It's up to you if you want to express that, if you want to show that to the world. And, uh, and I said this before, what's the greatest, what's the richest place in the world? The cemetery, because that's where you have a bunch of ideas, mm-hmm. gifts, and a bunch of potential that was never brought to light, you know? Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to die and be in heaven and wonder, like, fuck, what if I was... I don't want to die knowing I did not give this life my everything. Yeah. You know, and even if I did die right now, I'd be happy because I know I became a good person at the end of my life and I became, and I at least tried and gave this life my everything. You know? That's what's important. That's really what's important. And I think that's what a lot of people lose sight of is, am I happy with myself? Not is everybody else happy with what I'm doing? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I think we get so caught up in the validation of other people and the acceptance of other people that we not only like lose framework of our own sense of self, but we also don't even know how to pursue our potential. So we don't even try. And it's like, we get so lost. And so like, just into this dark mode that like, we almost like create our own wall and cocoon that we're the only ones that know how to break out of because these outside forces can't break out of it, I, I break it out for you. But all it takes is one little push. And it's so easy once you do it, it's just, it's so hard to get yourself to like do it for yourself, yeah. not for other people. You know what I mean? Like, but like, yeah, I know. And I'm proud, I'm proud as hell as you, dude. You, 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 have, you have become like just such a role model, like honestly, for so many people, bro. Like I, I look at you and I, I, Yo, like you're younger than me, bro. And I admire the shit out of you. You know what I mean? Like, I really do. Like, I really do. Like your story, just the, how far you've come, everything you've, everything you've overcome and the amount of like knowledge that you've acquired within yourself, it shows, it shows, man, it shows in every post and every word that you speak in every lift and every rep that I see you do. And I'm, I'm just, I'm blessed to have known you this long, man, to be honest with you. Like, I'm blessed to have seen you transition into like who you are now, because you, you are such a different person than when I met you, brother. Like, I swear to you, <laughs> and I'm just so proud of you. You bounce back. I mean, I'm pretty sure you're still going through a little bit, but hey, you're fucking still here, bro. You're still fucking, and you know, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna take time, brother, but hey, you're still here. You're still going strong. Hey, yeah. but you know, you're, di- you're divorced. I'm divorced. You know, that's just God's way of saying that, that she wasn't right for you, man. No, she, exactly. she wasn't in your plans. She wasn't exactly. in your plans. That's the way it took me a while to see that. But we're on to something better. Something better is on the way. And we're just going to keep on. Like, you know, I'm proud of you for who you are also. For not giving up. and still fucking hammering it, bro. <laughs> trying to, man. I'm trying to. It's been, like I said, it's been a rough year. But I got like, um, I got like two. No, I got. Yeah, I got two promotions at work over this past year. Um, and then I've, I've become like really close with everybody. Um, and, uh, and still been trying to like do this. I haven't been as consistent with the podcast and all this stuff, I will admit, but I've still been there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got really, I got really intimidated when, and I got really like this wall whenever my thing got deleted because I worked really hard on all that stuff. And I was just like, oh my gosh. But then, I was like, you know what? This is just, everything is a sign. Like everything's a sign. Everything is to be pursued with curiosity. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to just, I'm going to make another one and I'm going to just pick up where I left off, which I'm glad you like connect. Re- I'm glad we reconnected. Cause I was like, I, that's one thing that I, that I hated was I was like, dude, I'm going to have to look and see where everybody's names are at. Cause I was like, my goodness, I lost so many like good friends, you know? Like I was like, no, I've had to like go back and like just look people up. Um, but no, man, like I, you, you inspire me and you've, you've made me a better person, I will say. And I, I, I'm, I'm blessed to know people like you because not only that, but I, as a, like a human being and as like a man feel like if I needed to come to you, I could come to you. You know what I mean? For anything, brother, like honestly, and 
that's something that not a lot of people have. And that's something that's to be, you know, acknowledged. You know what I mean? You're good. You're a good man. You're a good dude. And it's only going to get better from here. I promise you. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, man, like, I will tell you this, like, I, um, I went through like a deep, deep depression and it was hard because I it was with my daughter full time because my wife, my ex-wife ended up just like dipping out to a, uh, Puerto Rico for a job and just leaving. So like, it was just me with all the bills with my daughter. And so it was just, it was, it was hard as hell um, to like just work full time and then like we were doing virtual school. So I had to make sure like somebody was there and then, you know, it was just a lot to deal with. It was a lot. So I went through this dark just phase as well. And I'm now, you know, climbing myself out of it. And really a lot of things have been coming to light. A lot of opportunities have been showing themselves as of late. And so um, I'm just blessed, man. I'm blessed that I had to go through it all just like you did because it just, it's turning me into the person that I know I wanted to be from the very jump. You know what I mean? It always opens your eyes. You know, one thing, you know, my boy Claudio, he told me, remember who the fuck you are. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, you're going to fucking fall, but remember who the fuck you are and always remember why you started. And, you know, and li life's always going to happen, bro. You know, this is just another step in life, you know. And I, I said it before, again, there's going to be times where we're going to lose somebody really close to us. Like, you know, God forbid, our mother, our grandmother, a close friend. Life is always going to happen. We get sick. Shit's just going to happen. But you got to learn how to adapt. And, you know, you just got to learn how to adjust and just fucking roll with the punches, you know? You might you might fucking get out of that fight all bruised up, but at least you're still fucking standing. Mm -hmm. Not like that, you know, life's always going to be throwing punches, but just fucking roll with the punches, baby. That's what it comes down to. And you got to fucking remember who you are. Yeah, I agree. Now, that level of, like, adaptation, like, w w with your ability to bounce back and recover and be like, all right, look, this happened, but I'm not going to put a negative connotation towards it. I'm going to, I'm going to just take it as what it is. And I'm going to just make, make it something that's going to work in my favor. So yeah. to speak, you know what I mean? And like leveraging your situation, you know, it's always important to know how to leverage your situation. And, you know, it might not be easy in the moment. You might not see how in the moment, but as long as you're willing to, like you said, you know, open up, and to the possibility of the fact that you're still there to go through it, that's really the essence in itself. Like, at least you're there to still go through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, you know, before we uh, continue this podcast, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, Kimberly. She's probably watching right now, but she's probably been the most genuine and most solid person I've met in a minute. Um, she's, she's fucking, she's dope as fuck. Um, but, you know, she's very, she's been very supportive, very, you know, she's actually been pushing, like pushing me, make sure I get shit done. Just for, I just want to say thank you for always supporting me and just being there. And um, she's cool as fuck. Hopefully, you know, we get, we get, you get to meet her someday, but you know, she's probably, she's been real cool. And, you know. That's what's up. Um, did you want to like give her a handle a shout too, so people could follow her or? Yeah, you can, yeah, we can put it up. Yeah, <laughs> but no, she's been really good. She likes to flip me off a lot, but it's all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she flipped me off a lot, but it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, That's yeah, bro, so it's life's a, life is a fucking marathon. It's not a sprint, bro. That's what it comes down. It's a fucking marathon. You're either going to be in this or you're not. Yeah, I think people get, I think people get very impatient. They get very impatient because they're expecting something. They're expecting this this uh this gold at the end of the rainbow so to speak you know what i mean they're not seeing the beauty in the rainbow as they're going through it like they're not like intrigued at the fact that they're on a fucking rainbow you know what i mean like they're just looking for the goal <laughs> like <laughs> i don't want to seem like a dark person bro but a lot of people want to feel that goodness they want to feel that always excitement happy me, I want to feel a little bit of discomfort. I want to feel a little bit of, hey, okay, let's see what I can do to better myself. Okay, that's just going to try to defeat me. Nah, it's not going to happen. I like feeling a little bit of anger, discomfort, because I, I, I want to challenge my own myself and see how much better I've gotten. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe for you to change, you got to get angry. Your life is powered by anger, which is in a bad or good way. 
But that's the reason why you change. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people don't want to change because they tolerate shit. And a lot of people say, oh, I want to, I want to do this. I want to change this. I want to leave this person. They don't because they tolerate it. That's they, true. They think about, oh, okay, well, he, she had a bad day. A bad day. Tomorrow's going to be a better day. And they keep fucking going that day after day after day because they start, they start to tolerate it. Whatever you tolerate will never change. And that's a big, and I said that yesterday in one of my posts, whatever you tolerate will never change. Mm-hmm. I remember you posting that, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, and whatever, you can't tolerate shit that's going to disturb your peace and your energy. Where are you going to go and how are you going to get better if you fucking tolerate bullshit? Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's why I admire Kendra for so much because she fucking, she's probably the only female that would fucking curse me out and if I would like upset or anything, she'll I, like I know like she'll check me hard. Like you gotta protect your energy. You gotta fucking. You gotta love yourself enough to be like, nah, fuck that. I'm not dealing with that bullshit. I'm moving the fuck on. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people they don't want to see that because they want to put up with the bullshit. They want to tolerate it, and it's and it's bullshit because you shouldn't be able to tolerate the bullshit. You know. And I think and yeah, and I and I th- I absolutely agree with that. And I think people like add fuel to the fire. Like I think people do it also in addition to like they almost like deliver it on the level that they've received it. Like they're like, Oh, this person did this to me. So I'm going to do that to them. And it's like, dude, why, why are you even just, no, just like, don't even, (laughs) don't even bother. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like a lot of people like feed into their own energy and psyche into like doing the same thing on the same level, just because they are like, they don't know how they don't know how to like look the other way. And it's like, if it's disturbing your peace, then just move along from it. Like, I don't understand, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's really hard for people, but um, I think you're absolutely right though. And so like, how, how did you get to a point where, like, what would you say for people who are in this like slump, right? Like, let's say like somebody is wanting to get in shape and they just like, they want better for themselves, but at the same time, like they're not angry enough to like get past that threshold of like, and like, I don't really want to be this like uncomfortable. Like, I, I don't want, like, I, like I'm complacent, but I want to move. Like, like, how would you like go about being like, what do you want? What, what? How to spark that anger? How to spark that? It's a little, it's like a little gray area because a lot of people are not going to see it from my point of view because a lot, it takes, it's going to take a while to see this. But my advice would be accept your flaws Look yourself in the mirror. And if you can't look yourself in the mirror, force yourself to look in the mirror. If you got to look at old pictures of how, how you got yourself to a point where it's pretty disgusting for yourself to look at, you got yourself there. You just got to be real with yourself. You got you to gotta accept the fact that you are the one that put yourself there. In that position. You just got to come real with yourself. You Don't make excuses. Don't blame other people how, of them putting you there. They've really got to look themselves deep within themselves and just fucking, that's the way I did it. You know, I got, I got myself fat. <laughs> I got myself in the hospital. I became, I was the alcoholic. No one, no one told me to put that bottle to my fucking lips. No one told me to sit on my ass and eat McDonald's every day. I did that on my own. So my thing is you got to get real with yourself and just fucking be brutal with yourself. If you're fat, you're fat. Accept it. Shit. I'm at a point where, yeah, I'm chubby. But I love who I am. Mm-hmm. And if you hate your being fat, you hate your own, you're uncomfortable in your own skin, then fucking do something about it. Stop fucking posting shit online that you're not happy about it. Get the fuck up and do something about it. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. You gotta, yeah. your, my advice is you got to find it within you. And if you can do it, reach out to me. Um, Sam's going to put on my IG handle and I'll put mine up. You guys want to talk? Yeah. You got to get real with yourself. You got to go to war with yourself. And I love preaching that because that's the only way you're going to do it. I can, I can sit here and be nice to you guys and tell you guys what you want to hear, but that's not me. That's not my style. You gotta, if you don't like what I'm telling you, well, maybe because I'm right. Maybe because you, you just got to look yourself in the mirror and really get brutal with yourself. No, I agree, man, honestly. And I think people, they don't do that enough, to be honest. They, they let too many days go by that are the same. And they like pointing fingers. fingers. Dude, yeah, no, that's exactly right. Um, that's exactly right. Uh, instead of like instead of just having the accountability within themselves on where they are and what and the situation that they have. You might like your particular situation may or may not be your like fault per se, 
but it's completely your fault if you remain to stay there. Oh, absolutely. 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 You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and like, if you like, granted, there are certain instances, like, you know, you, you ate all that food, you ate all that sugar, you drank all that alcohol, you did that. So yes, in those instances, you did get yourself in those situations. But it, no matter what the situation is, though, you have the ability and the power, like we said earlier, like to adapt and yeah. take the accountability for where you are uh, enough to make it like, realize, make you realize what you want enough to push you to really get to that point where you want to actually change yourself. And I think like sometimes it does take like extreme circumstances, like uh, like how you had to go to the hospital. Like sometimes you you would really have to be like, you know, do or die moments and really think twice about what it is. Yeah, and sometimes like certain people have opportunities that they sh- that like they need to see beforehand so it doesn't get to that point. But I I think that there's something to be considered when you say that you love the discomfort because any level of discomfort is going to inherently allow us to grow at least 1% a day, at least 1% a day, you know, and that's really all that matters is if you're progressing and you're going in a direction that's going to better you for what you want to be, you will be happy with yourself. You know what I mean? Like, and to those people do not avoid the easy path. Uh, sorry. Do not. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Hold on. <laughs> go to the easy path. Do not take that easy path. If you're going to grow, you're going to build, take the hard road. And you know what? When you take that hard road, you're going to learn a lot about yourself. Yeah, there's going to be times where you're going to want to turn back and walk back the other way to fucking keep walking forward. You're going to hit some bad things in your life. And even if you're going to hit rock bottom, and even if you're going to be in the darkest place in your life, do it. you got to learn yourself. you got to learn. You're going to learn your weaknesses. You're going to learn your strengths. And you're going to build strengths, you know? And embrace your weaknesses. Believe it or not, your weaknesses are your greatest weapons because that you that's you're identifying the things that got you, got you over that hump that got you to get stronger. So embrace your weaknesses, embrace your flaws. They're your greatest weapons. They're, they're your greatest attributes, we should say. The easy road is for weak-minded people. Honestly, just shut up. The easy road is for people who, do, who don't want to be great, who are just okay with going through life, who are okay with where they're at. If you want to be great, if you want to change, take that hard road. You know, shit, it took me almost fucking eight years. You know, it's not going to it's not gonna be overnight. You know, like Sam, Sam's been here since I first started all this shit. It's, yeah. it's not going to be sunshine and rainbows at all. It's not, not at all. Not at all. There's going to be more fucking stormy clouds, more hurricanes and sunshine. I'll tell you that right now. But, you're but, not it, makes, but it makes you appreciate the sunshine that much more. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. But also, you know, and I love, I, I, I'm just happy because I don't tolerate bullshit anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah. like I, I know what I want and who, and who I am. Yeah. And you've like sort of, um, and, and you're now you're at a point where it's become routine for your mind. Like, like you've trained your mind to be disciplined too. And I think that's something that not a lot of people realize is um, like when you start to do things that are in for your best interest, good things start to happen ironically and then you start to like train your mind into thinking like okay well i did these things i just need to be disciplined and consistent about what i'm doing and good things will continue to happen and like you almost like that's that's when i think you start to like not like necessarily crave the hardship but like you don't mind it at that point like if something bad happens or something that is going to inhibit you you're just like oh okay i'm good you know what i mean like okay, okay, how can I get through this? That's what goes. Through, that's what controls my mind. Is like, yeah, fuck that happened. But let's see what I can do to get through it. Exactly. Know? I'm gonna tell you. Hold on one second. Um, so if my IG cuts off, I'll just restart the live. Um, because okay. for some reason it's saying I have like five seconds left. So when it stops, I'll reboot it and I'll reinvite you if that's all right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Cool. But I'm still on here, so that's good. <laughs> about that. So, while we're on. Or not. Hold on, hold on. Let me. Is it just like saved if I just leave it? Let me just share. Do I have to share it, Dina? You know? Let's see. I don't know if this, I don't know if I have to share it necessarily. Hold on one second. Oh shit! I don't even know where I shared it. I don't know how. I don't know if they have like a share button anymore. Let me 
do a live episode. I'll just caption it later, but I'm just gonna post it or like at least post it on the thing so that way it's yeah, I don't know if I saved it somewhere. I'm hoping I saved it. Either way it'll get saved. So it's all well, good. Well we got the whole fucking video right here. Yeah, I know we got everything here too. So I'll go live again though. Right, and I can't okay. invite you. Hold on, here we go. Oh, shit. Man, it's the first we've been going for an hour, bro. Dude, I know that's crazy. I already knew though it was gonna be easy to like. Yeah. Dude, I know. I already knew though it was gonna be easy. I think I should like. This is better too. All right, cool. We good? Yeah, we're good. All right, cool. Yeah, sorry about that. Last the last time I was on live, I had like a four hour window i don't know why i only had an hour window this time okay. anyway, so, yeah. so what let me ask you something why do you think people have such a hard time loving themselves uh having a hard time what why do you think people have a hard time loving themselves loving themselves Ooh. let's see i think i think at least for myself because i can tell you right now that i for a portion of the time didn't love myself um I got too, I got, like, like I was talking about earlier, I got too wrapped up in what other people thought of me. And I, I, my identity got too wrapped up in other people's validation. And so when I, like, when my ex-wife left me, it was like all of my acceptance, even just for myself, because it was like my whole identity, my, my whole identity for my being left me. And like that, what does that leave me with? Like, who am I really? Like, so I just was like, why, why? Like, why? Just why? Why even love myself at all? Like, what's the point if nobody else does? Yeah. And I knew, and, and, and there's a certain level of understanding, I think, that, like, you know you have to love yourself, but to actually fully love yourself is a totally different dynamic. Yeah. And I think that that's really hard. Um, but and yeah. I, myself, I'm like, I, didn't, I never knew how to love myself. I didn't even know what it felt like. I'm like, this whole time, I thought I did love myself. I'm like, well, sure, I'm waking up. I love myself, but you know, yeah, like you don't, you don't understand it, like what it is fully. Is it, you know? But I think, fuck, I wish I could explain the feeling. But I know the feeling now that I had a couple months ago. Oh, fuck! You feel, you feel the energy. You feel the fucking, you know. I'm gonna admit, back, I was a piece of shit when I was drinking. You know, I did a lot of, I, you know, I apologize to a lot of people. I did bad to when I was drinking. I was a piece of shit. I was in this, but I was, I felt like I was waking up like an accident, you know, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Waking up like, yeah. why am I still here? Like, why can't, like, I don't deserve to be here. Like, I don't deserve to be in this, you know, and I did have suicidal thoughts, you know, I mean, I, the last time I attempted suicide was, I think, last June, last June or July. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah, so it's like, and you know, okay, so you know what I think is crazy too is it's like all these other people see so much potential in you and all these people are trying to push you as well. And then like in the background, you have all of these like, I'm pathetic. I don't deserve this at all. I am never going to live up to your guys' expectations. I don't know why you guys see me like this. I'm really not shit. Like what the fuck? So like you're, you're almost like depleting it all when you really do have that potential and that's something that took me a while too, was like, I, I just, everybody saw all this in me and I'm like, well, I don't understand it. I used to see it, but I don't see it. I, I don't know what you're seeing, but I see that I'm like a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I was like, why do people like me? Like I'm, I'm nobody, I'm nothing. I'm just a fucking uh, an alcoholic that lifts weights. You know, even when I was fucking lifting, I was drinking. I took a, a I did a couple shots before I fucking want to go lift. You know, I was, I'm like, why? It took me so long to realize, like, no, I'm, I'm here to change people's life. And TD Jake said it best: don't be famous, be effective. And that's my, that's my, that's my motto every day when I wake up, is to be effective, try to help somebody. If I get one person a day, that'd be fucking fantastic, you know. And I have, a, I've had a lot of people reach out, and I appreciate everybody reaching out because it just, I just want to show and tell people they're not alone. Because me, you, other people have fucking stories. Each of us have different stories that we could change people's lives you know mm -hmm. and i think that i think um that's what i love is like 
uh, when people open up about their stories and their perspectives, it really paints a picture for somebody else to view that and view it as like a, like, like something that they can either relate to to help them out. But right. like, they wouldn't know if you aren't opened up about it. And that's why I love that you're so open about the way that you feel. Because that's something that we've always had in common is like, we're not afraid to like be open about our emotions and like what we're feeling and what's going on. Um, and then like trying to just like be as open and honest as possible and being as, you know, talking about our own struggles to help other people. And I think that there's like something really powerful about that because we're not like, we're not just like preaching things. Like we're trying to just like give advice based off of what we've been through. And I think that a lot of people, they are scared to open up and be vulnerable. You said, you said yeah, I was going to say that right now. <laughs> and I think that that's a big thing. Yeah. Uh, but go ahead. No, go, you can, you can add on to that if you like. My boy Luis said it best. He's like, for you to, like, and I said it too, to change the world, you got to change yourself. And for in order for you to change yourself, you got to make yourself vulnerable. You got to make, you got to introduce a part of you that people know that, you know, when you tell people, they can use that against you, you know, and it comes with the territory. If you want to be great and if you want to change people, you got to open up your life. You got to open up, you got to be vulnerable to people because people are going to understand you more. People are going to understand where you're coming from, your struggles, like why you do what you do. Now a lot of people don't want to be vulnerable because they'll be like, nah, they don't need to know my they, they don't need to know my story. They don't need to know, they don't need to know why I got abused, why I did this, why I did that. Nobody needs to know. And a lot of people don't realize your story, your past, your vulnerability is a game changer. It's what could save somebody else's life. Mm -hmm. And you gotta see it from a point of view where I think you're know, like, we all have a book. We're living in a we're living in life <laughs> when you die. How's your book gonna look? Are you gonna say something when somebody reads your book? Are you gonna save their life, or are they just gonna close it and be like, ah, well, if he did that, I could do, it. you know? Damn, that's actually that. That is a good. I've heard of like writing your own book before, but I've yeah. never heard of somebody reading your book over, yeah. and 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 thinking what is what are they reading like? Are they intrigued by your story, or are they just like, eh, meh. I never thought about it like that though. That's yeah. really intriguing. That's a good way way to think about that. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. To you almost life or you're just going to encourage them to continue the bad habits mm -hmm. that's I, so true and people me i want somebody to read my book and be like fuck yeah if he did that shit and i could do it and well shit it's true if i could do it anybody could do it you know i'm just i'm just a fucking guy here from downey california who does powerlifting and just li enjoys life you know yeah i'm just an average normal dude man <laughs> and that's part of the you know be humble be humble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bro. I always, I know where I came from. I know where I started. First of all, you know, it, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. I've been through a lot of bullshit, you know? Yeah, man. No, I, and, uh, I, and it's cool because like what started out as like, almost like, um, your little dream at first, your little vision with, um, what was the last, uh, clothing? What was it called again? Underdog, uh, Relentless underdog. Relentless underdog. There you go. And um, yeah, so like I remember like when it all started there, and then you know it's it's just cool to see that like you've been persistent throughout the whole thing. You know, yeah. even even when you were drinking, even through you going through the hospitalization, even going through everything that happened with you and like your ex and stuff, like like to just see the amount of persistence added on to the the, the level of ambition. Like you didn't lose any ambition. Was the crazy thing. Like most people lose a lot of ambition and sense of ambition. I know I did. I lost a lot of ambition when everything was going on. And it just seems like you kind of like had this, this ability to adapt in such a way that like made you see things in hindsight, like as they were happening, if that makes sense. Like, so like you were like, yes, this is happening now. I didn't see it before, but now that it is happening I know what I'm going to do. Like, and then you like, you use it and then like it clicks and the ambition comes back. Like, you know what I mean? It's not depleted. I think that's hard for a lot of people. I And I lost that ambition. I probably lost it from, for like four months. I'm like, fuck, I don't want to do shit. I'm just waking up. I, I got to a point where I was just waking up, drinking, going back to sleep. I look forward to getting drunk, maybe work. You know, I, I would work out, but I'd be just like, I'm just here to work out. Nah, I got drinking, you. I continue drinking and go to sleep. Like, I was looking forward to getting drunk and listening to music. That was my main priority. And, it, and I'm like, fuck, dude, I really got myself to that place. But, you know, 
this fire inside of me, oh, man, this is probably the most brightest has ever been lit, you know? And I fucking, I, like, I wish I could share this with you, my feeling I feel inside, but I feel so fucking good, you know? Yeah. You know, I actually have a guest coming in right now, my my sports therapist. He's coming in right now, so we could probably get him in this little podcast right now. Oh, nice. Yeah, that'd be yeah, sick. He actually, he actually do some work on me for the meet on Sunday, so... Please. He's a good dude. I I, did, I went with him yesterday, so I told him come do my my hips today. So, so what would you say um, for somebody who's like really um, trying to like get into shape or get their mind right? Like, is there something that you would advise? Like, would you advise like maybe starting to just eat better, or would you advise like starting to work out, or would you advise like after like you focus on yourself, you realize what you're wanting? Is there something that like you like just uh health wise like is this something that you would like advise them to do to kind of clean up their mindset a little bit like maybe they could you know obviously drink more water but is there something in particular that you would like like uh, that you would like it's really simple just start just start the hardest part is showing getting to the gym as soon as you get to the gym just start there's, <laughs> there's no it's pretty simple it's just fucking start just like with everything in life as soon as you just gonna find a place to start and just fucking start but hold on, hold that thought. Let me get Caesar in here. No, you're good, brother. Go yeah. for it. Sam, this is my boy Caesar. What up? Hey, what's going on? How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Doing good, man. I can't complain. I G, you guys know C, Raw Body Works. What up? What up? Yeah, this is my boy C right here. The man, the myth, the legend. Yeah, so uh, so what do you do exactly? He said you're gonna be working on him? Yeah, I do I do a sports rehab. So nice. um yeah, uh, I've been doing it for about six years now. Oh yeah. How'd you uh, how'd you get into that? Um I, I coming out of high school, you know, I was a 4.0 student, and I um I didn't have a college to go to. I I um what's it called? Everybody, I went to a college prep school, which is basically I don't know where you're from. Uh, are you from out here? Are no, from I'm from like way. Yeah, I'm in New Mexico. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, that's dope. My my guy CJ, he's he's gonna go play at a at University of New Mexico. He's gonna be a quarterback. Oh, really? No way. Yeah, oh, that's that name, man. He's a legend for sure. Okay, hell yeah. I'll be sure to maybe reach out to him on if he's here. Shoot. Yeah, yeah. He's he's gonna be a lobo. But uh, yeah. So uh, small world, by the way. It is. <laughs> there, there's, there's like you know like all guy schools, and, yeah. and that means that's like a private school, a Catholic school, and um, going there, you know, I was just focused and um, committed to to like my education and sport. And, and I always, you know, I always thought I was going to play sports, um, you know, college or pro, whatever it would be. Growing up, that's a dream. But then you know, obviously you, you learn when you become, you know, like junior, senior year of high school, you're like, nah, this is, this is not going to, you know, you, you get humble real quick. Once you yeah. meet a real different breed of athletes, you're like, nah, like this is not, this is not for me. Hey, Sam, and this dude's only 24 years old, bro. Damn, really? Yeah, so straight out of high school, <laughs> two weeks after high school, I didn't, I didn't have a summer. I went straight into school for this. Uh, it was nine months. After those nine months, um, I got my license to do, in California, to do massage and body works, and I've been doing it ever since. I worked with the chiropractor for a few years, and then within those years, I did, like, my own thing, like house calls and stuff. And then now I'm happy to say I have my own uh, location. It's in San Dimas. Yeah. Oh, out here in California. Congratulations, man. That's quite the story, dude. Honestly, like not. Yeah. Wow. A lot of people, I feel like a lot of people, they, um, they let like the defeat of their wantingness to like be in a sport kind of, they're just like, ah, I don't even want to have anything to do with that. Cause it killed me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it's, it's cool that you kind of use that and you still embrace it and you can still be involved with like sports in general and still love it. You know what I mean? Or just involved with just the whole thing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, lately I've been working with a lot of Juco players and, 
I think those are the best people to work with because they still have that fire in them. They still want it bad. It's almost like, um, I don't know if you watched uh, uh, Last Chance You, the ELAC one. Uh, I did not, actually. No. Check it out, man. That's basketball, but still, man, these guys, they're hungry, you know, because that's all they've ever wanted is just, a, just an opportunity to play, and, and they all have that, like, ambition to just, just keep going and, and keep, uh, keep working uh, towards that dream. Um, we have a, a mutual friend. Um, we had, that's actually how I met also. His name is Paco. Um, and I always think about his story, man, what he went through um, yeah. through UCLA and – because he, he, uh, he played D1 football, and, you know, that kind of got taken away from him because of other things, injuries and just, just situations with, with, with NCAA and the program. But um, when you see that, like, dream taken away from someone, it's very hard, man. It, 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 it puts a toll on them. It puts a toll on their emotional, physical, and, you know, like, state, and it, it, they go through it. But – um. But yeah, man, just just doing this for six years. One of the one of the best things I've learned is um, with uh with sports sports medicine is um a lot of people. I think I think it's it's important to educate yourself as far as uh your body yeah. and recovery at a young age. That's why I like working with you know uh, guys who haven't even gone to college because what I tell them and what I can't stress enough is when you get to college, when you're a D one athlete, when you whatever whatever college you go to, um. There's so many other players that as soon as you go through an injury, the school's going to be like, all right, cool. Who else is here? Who else do we have? You know, and it, it, it sucks because that's really what it is. And that's why they recruit so many people because it's a, you know, it's part of the sport. They're going to get injured and they might help you, but it's not going to be like what you really need, the help that you really need, you yeah. know? And because at the end of the day, at first you're an asset, but once you're injured, you're a liability. Ooh. So they're just gonna they're just gonna push you, you know, they're gonna push you to the back, like, okay, who else do we have? Who, who's up next? And then That's exactly yeah. right. It's almost it's almost like life, you know. You're an asset when you're healthy, but you're like a liability when you're not, dude. Like, Absolutely. Especially Absolutely. to yourself. <laughs> oh man, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude that no that's that's crazy man that's uh that's really cool because i think um especially right now it's not only really good to like take care of yourself mentally but like physically you should at least understand and um it does take a mental toll so like to 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 understand your body and then understand your mind the way that you you know the way that you kind of tell people hey look like gotta understand this this is like kind of the bottom line here i'm just being real with you you know what i mean like I think it braces them. And that's a really good thing too, because so many people, even like, even after, like, let's say you do become like a D1 or like, let's say you do like get into even just the pros or whatever. Like those are very short lived careers for most people. Absolutely. So, you know, like, so either way, you're going to have to prepare your mindset for that sort of deal. And that's something that's really hard for a lot of people, especially to keep that level of ambition and, and to do something else. You know what I mean? Cause so many people like that's their one thing they don't even have like another outlet or another hobby. So they're just kind of like, Oh, if it's not this, then it's nothing. And then that even makes it worse. I feel like, you know what I mean? But yeah, no, that's cool, man. No, that's, that's sick. It's a pleasure to meet you, brother. Honestly. Likewise, my man. God bless you. No, but this, this dude right here, he's been, he was there for me when I was before my, you know? Yeah. Uh, So it's like, I'm very thankful for this guy right here, you know. He's going through his own little thing right now, but, you know, I admire him for his strength and for the things. He has his own fucking office now, you know. And we spoke about that too, you know. And it, and just the involvement and just the growth that we've seen from him, I'm very proud of him. And, you know, if our iron sharpens iron. You know, that's what it comes out. You know? <laughs> get with mind, like-minded people or people who are going to challenge you. And he's, and he's one of the few that challenged me, you know, because I see how young he is. And I know by the time he's my age, he's going to be much greater than I was when I was 29, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I can't let the young guys fucking run me up, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, dude, honestly. And I think there's something to be said about that. Like, if there's something that anybody takes away from this too, it's to uh, bring a level of community with like-minded people that you want to be like as well. Like, like, like the people that you want to, be around that are going to help you excel and bring you up because if you're closed off and you're isolated and you're not talking about anything, it's just as bad as having negative friends. You know what I mean? Like, like it's, it's almost like 
you know, having no credit is just as bad as having bad credit. You know what I'm saying? Like you need to have people around you like that are going to spark creativity and, and, and call you out and actually help you progress, you know, because I think a lot of people are afraid to open up. There are a lot of people are afraid to just sit there and meet people, talk to people, um, find people, you know, they just want to be in their own little shell. And it's really easy to do. It's really easy to just be in your own shell and just kind of cut yourself off. You know? There's a lot of people who want pat in the backs for mm -hmm. every little fucking accomplishment they, they do, you know, and that's why I love my guys because for us, if we do something good, it's like, okay, what's next? You know, what are you going to do next? And <laughs> pat on the backs don't mean shit. It's like, and that's why a lot of people now, when they accomplish something, they stop because they've met their goal and they don't think to the future, okay, what am I going to do after this goal? So as soon as they do one goal, they stop. For us, for people who want to be great, you got to set yourself one goal and you got to have that game plan. Okay, if I do this, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's next? What's next? You can't settle. There's no, you can never settle. You can never be content. You always got to be discomfort knowing that you might not be here the next day. So you got to give life your 100% every day, day in and day out. That's true. That's what it comes down to. That's really true. Like, because that's the fact of the matter is, um, we're not gonna, we're not always promised tomorrow. It's like the, it's like we're not guaranteed to our next breath. You know what I mean? And you know, I like to say there's somebody right now, like in a minute, five minutes, who are not gonna be alive. And that, if you really think about that, it's like that. Somebody's about to die in like five minutes. Just thinking about that is like that. And nobody's gonna live past two o'clock today, you mm -hmm. know? And it's just like, it hits home, you know? It's just like, and that's not who I wanna be. That's not what I wanna be. I wanna make sure I gave life everything exactly like you said like you want to make sure there's chapters that people can reflect back to when they look at your book and they're like oh man i want to read that chapter where he went we really went through it and he overcame or oh i want to read that that really inspirational chapter where he 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 hit that new pr like i want to oh i want to you know what i mean like like and i think those that level of um willingness to just go for it you know no fear and keep pushing no matter what that's that's really what's important you know what i mean a lot of people just they just me included myself included like sometimes we do stop whenever we feel like we are accomplished in a certain thing or uh when we feel we just like are so depleted that there's really we, we don't know where to start so we just don't you know what i mean and i as long as you just do something as long as you do something and you consistently do something it'll amplify into other things, you know, but it's all about that reprogramming in your mind. And it's really what it is. And it's one thing, you know, a lot of people like to say sky's the limit. Sky is not the fucking limit. You know, and that's why I like to live by it. Sky is never the limit because there's something beyond that. Well, at least we're taught, right? That there's something yeah. beyond the sky. Why stop at the sky? There's things beyond that, the unknown. So it's like always sky is never the limit, you know? Which is what you're saying too. Like uh, you hit something and what's next? What's next? What's that, next? That's, that's it. That's it. There's, there is no limit. There's nothing. Okay. You lost 20 pounds. Good. Okay. Go for 30. <laughs> you got a promotion. Okay. Get another promotion. You know, like, you you're, uh, like how you, uh, like how you posted too. You even posted that with your, uh, with your sobriety thing. You were like, okay, let's go for 300. Like, I can't wait. <laughs> are you like, I can't wait. And people have asked me, it's like, Oh, what are you gonna do for a year? You're going to take a drink. Why the fuck am I? I don't I'm <laughs> drinking no more it's like why am i gonna drink on the you know y'all missing the point here and that's and that's a, and that's the problem people want to set rewards for every little thing fuck that you know what's the ultimate reward what's the ultimate thing you're chasing yeah exactly no yeah and i think to identify that is um where you need to start you know what why are you doing what you're doing why why are you getting up in the morning why are you doing it don't lose sight of that like, don't lose sight of your why. And don't yeah. lose sight of, like, the inside of you that, like, wants to become something. And you're never going to be motivated. I know, at least for me, I'm not motivated all the time. I actually thought about dropping out of this meet last week, two weeks ago, because I'm like, fuck, my body's all fucked up. I'm still, I'm still beat up from the last meet. I competed in March, and, you know, I was peaking the first couple of weeks of this meet prep, but my strength just, and I'm like, dude, I'm not ready for this Sunday. But, you know, I have a lot of people counting on me. 
I had to, but I had to prove it to myself, you know? Mm. Motivation is bullshit. I know Caesar, he's fucking, there's some days he's fucking busy as fuck. He doesn't want to come in the next day. He's fucking tired, but he grinds because this is, it becomes an obsession at mm-hmm. that point. You know? And for you, you know, I, I mean, I hope for you it's an obsession of what you do. It's not like when people, when people say what motivates you, I'm like, nothing is just, it's just a lifestyle now. It's just an obsession. It's like, if I don't do it, I feel we're not doing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You have to make, it's going to take time to develop that skill. And I believe that's a gift. You know, once you become obsessed with your craft, then you reach an an level of greatness and know that nothing's going to break you, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I think, um, you know, developing that level of craft really takes a lot of self-reflection and it takes a lot of like knowing who you are. So you're not going in the wrong direction. You know what I mean? And then, um, just cause like, like with you, like, you know, um, you knew you wanted to do all this, you knew you wanted to do this stuff. And then like, when, when that became stronger than the other side of it, that's really when you were like, okay, I know, I know, I know what I like to do now because I know who I am. Like, I just need to like really hone in on like what I'm doing to fulfill this potential here. Like, you know, and then when you started to do that, like you really found out, okay, this is, this is exactly who I am. This is exactly what I'm doing. And it allowed you to keep pushing for yourself, like for the inner part, not for the outer part. You know, a lot of people do work out, but for external reasons as well. You know what yeah. I mean? They're not even doing it for their health. They're just doing it to look good. And I think yeah. that that can be toxic as well. You know, so like for doing it for the right reasons, it helps push you in a, in a much deeper way. Like you yeah. said, you know what I mean? And support each other, support your friends, support your small businesses, support your homies business. Uh, my boy Ruben said it best. There's enough money in the world for all of us. Never hate on anybody. Never bring down somebody. Always bring each other up. We're all in this together. You know? Sure. That's really yeah, true. I'm going I'm to I'm have to get this therapy done. But, you know. Yeah. No, go for it, man. Um, uh, lastly, just last question for you. Um, yeah. You know, I always ask this. But I don't know if it's changed as far as, you know, the last time I asked you. But. What does success mean to you? What is it? What is it? What does success mean to me? Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a little, it means nothing. It means nothing if I don't impact people's lives. I love that shit, dude. I love that shit. It doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't mean nothing if I don't live out my purpose. If I don't, if I don't meet my vision, it means nothing. That's what. Yeah. I think, and I mean that in the most positive way, because money comes and goes. You know, you're only gonna be at a, you're gonna be at a peak for a while before you come back down. Mm-hmm. So it means nothing if you don't do it for the right reasons, like we talked about, and if you don't impact people's lives. Yeah, that's true, man. That's true. The impact is what matters. That's the long lasting. No, I appreciate you getting on, man. I appreciate you. Um, I don't know when the next time we're gonna be able to get on. So I like, like I said, dude. Hopefully, we could do this uh, a lot more. But um, I just, I, I appreciate you, man. And I appreciate the level of friendship that we've, that we've grown with. And um, just thank you, man, for always being there for me and always sticking with me too. And I'm always here for you. And I'm proud of you, man. Proud of you. Thank you for having me on. We'll do this again. And then hopefully Caesar stays on for a full podcast, you know? Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right we'll see all you, brother. Right. Yeah. Love you, man. You go. Later, brother.